What's going on everybody? Welcome to today's video. Today's going to be a little different than what I've done in the past. Today we're going to be looking at the MechPal X4 laser engraver. This is a 22 watt laser engraver, so it should be pretty powerful and it's at a decent price. Let's see what it can do. I'm gonna go ahead and get this unboxed. I've got two cameras going. I've got a little GoPro over here, or action camera, so you can get a different view. And yeah, let's see what it looks like on the inside. One thing that's supposed to be super nice about this model specifically is it comes pretty much basically assembled. So uh, you can see the box is a little large. Um, I think the footprint on this thing is roughly around 24 inches in depth at its longest part, almost a full square too. So uh, that should give you an idea on what kind of desk or workbench or wherever you're gonna be setting this up, um, what size you're going to need. So here we go. I'm gonna leave that open because we're probably gonna need it here in a second. We open up and we've got something here. Maybe we can just go ahead and remove this. Whoa, okay, cool. So. Everything looks to be basically assembled in the box. This is great. So we're just gonna go ahead and take everything out of the box, get it laid out on the table, and then we'll continue the assembly. Also, as I'm getting this unboxed, I do wanna mention that this actually comes with a air assist in the box at the price point, which is awesome. Just make sure you're not gonna get a lot of laser scorching um, on your wood or anything else you're burning and just overall helps with the engraving process. This was an added feature that I had to buy on my X tool. So it's really cool to see that this was bundled with this laser engraver. So we are unboxed. We've got basically a fully assembled unit, the laser engraver itself, power supply, ethernet cable, what looks to be a Wi-Fi antenna, USB and SD card, the air assist, as well as some leg risers here. Looks like a little brush for cleaning. Ah, and your safety glasses. One thing to note is it's very important that you are using safety glasses when you are going to do any sort of laser engraving. This is horrible for your eyes, as you can assume. So we also have some sort of, uh, this is probably a test like acrylic. Um, Looks like, uh, oh yeah, basswood. You can use a little wrench and some thicker cardboard that we can use here. Phillips head screwdriver and the user manual. We're gonna take a look at this, get this set up, and then we'll check back in a little later on. Well, as you can see here, we have some stuff to talk about with the MechPow X4. So it's been a few days since the first portion of this video and I've got some laser engraving done on here. So a few test uh, engravings and I ran into a couple issues. So I thought I would share with you. So as you can see, it's not supposed to look like that. Let me set it down and I'll bring you closer so you can see what's going on here. So as we know, it came out of the box pretty much all the way assembled. Um, I run a MacBook here. so. I had to download the drivers. Um, I am using paid software, I'm using Lightburn, but I couldn't get this thing to read in Lightburn after following the instructions, which I will say are a little more on the uh, developer side than I would say your average person is. So uh, getting the drivers installed were pretty interesting and just checking to make sure everything was working correctly on my end took a little bit of time. But one thing on this machine that they don't really mention, it plugged back in here. In order for this machine to work, this emergency stop has to be deployed, um, which, yeah, that's great. Emergency stop, awesome. But what's really weird is on here, it says that you need to turn it to stop it, or at least that's what, how I read it in English. It says stop, turn. But that's not really the case. That's to deploy it so you can then press it to stop it. So needless to say, that took me a little while to figure that out. Um, but we did get some successful prints on here, or excuse me, laser engravings. I used the little metal piece here. I made a cool little sign that says Shayway. But as you can see here, there is a little bit of warping around the edges here, around the square. And I thought that was kind of weird. So I didn't really know what to do. So I started looking at the laser engraver itself. I was like, hmm, maybe this has something to do with it. So you can see this side over here bulges out at the very bottom, and this side over here 
bulges out drastically more at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my grid. So you can see I started creating a grid here for like the waist piece. And that way I had something that I could help actually figure out if it was, if my stuff was aligned correctly. But once it got to the top here, it got all the way back and you can see it's touching over on this side and not touching over here. So this is, this is completely warped right now. So it was trying to engrave and was like smashing up against the back and was causing like this engravement here you can see is just super off. Out of the box, this thing's going to require a little more hands-on than what I anticipated. I think that like from the, the few test prints I did, like the, the laser engraving quality seems to be really good. Um, I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna reach out to support and see if they can give me an idea on how to fix this. Welcome to another jump cut to the future. Uh, I went ahead and got the issue worked out and it was way simpler than I thought it was going to be. I actually ended up not talking to support at all about uh, what was going on. Just figured I would uh, mess around with it and see if I could resolve and self-resolve because a lot of people don't wanna go through the hassle of buying a new product and reaching out to support to get their issues resolved. So basically I wanted to just take a second, take a step back and figure out what was going on. And I have a solution in case that happens to you uh, of how you can get it resolved. I'm gonna take you off to, of the tripod real quick so I may get a little jittery. So basically, you can see this is still bulging out a little bit. And that's okay though, because it's even on both sides. Basically what I was noticing is the gantry was kind of wopsided like this. So the way I was able to resolve this though was back here on the back right corner. I loosened up this bolt here and got some tension off of this belt on the inside here. What that allowed me to do was kind of um, add a little bit of pressure and kind of pull this back while pushing this side forward. And surprisingly enough, that seemed to resolve it. You know, I tightened everything back up and now it seems to be engraving with no issues and straight and it is able to go all the way back here and check it out. Touching on that side, still not completely touching on this side, but you know, if I press a little forward, it does. The thing, the thing to think about is it doesn't really have to touch even on both sides because there's limit switches and that's what you're wanting it to press. You're wanting it to whenever it clicks back here that it's whenever it's even on this side that it's touching that limit switch. You hit a little click, you may not, but it's clicking and that sounds good. That's how we know we are good to engrave. I'm currently uh, printing a Hogwarts, uh, like a laser engraved thing. Uh, 12 by 12 frame. That's the cool thing about laser engraving is you can go to any craft store or honestly Goodwills too, funny enough, has a lot of like just blank wood canvases that you can use to engrave on. I even went online to Amazon and bought some of the uh, little basswood uh, things and I made like a jig, let me show you. So I made this like little jig here, literally just cut out a two by three square. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to place this down cut it, I can align this piece, and I'm able to line up leather patches on the inside here. So if I wanted to mass produce leather patches with things written on them, of course, this is uh, proprietary information, like this is Billy Strings, the musical artist, and then Old Town Sportsman, the kayak brand that I use. But these turned out really good, and if I wanted to make stuff for like local businesses or anything like that, I can get a pack of these for 60, or I can get 60 for, for 10 bucks. Throw them on my laser engraver. You know, they're already adhesive on the back. Buy some hats and heat press to them. So that's definitely something I'm probably gonna be doing here in a future video of using this laser engraver to make a few hats. And who knows, maybe I'll be able to make some hats for myself and friends, family, and whoever else may want one. So just to summarize, we've got a 22 watt laser engraver, 400 by 400 millimeter build volume, which translates to roughly a little over 15 inches squared. It's awesome. Uh, it's, it's really nice. I love the fact that it came with the air assist. Again, that is such a nice touch. Adjusting the laser engraver to the correct height is super easy. You just have this little notch thing that flips down and it will automatically set it to the height that you need to, to have it at 
you flip it up and you screw it into place. Super simple to use. Thank you so much to MechPal for sending this out to check out. I'm looking forward to using this on some future projects around the house and seeing what else we could do with it. Thanks so much for checking out today's video. We'll see you next time.